Hello there, and welcome to JJ Painting. I am JJ, and what do we do on this channel? Well, we talk about the hobby, of course. It's reviews of codexes, reviews of novels. We talk about the history of the hobby, the evolution of the models. Drunken explains there's a bit of something for everyone here. And today, as you can tell from the title of this video, it's something which I'm talking about from experience here. We're talking about painting traps, how to avoid falling into certain painting traps that trip up everyone and can sometimes, if not spoil a model, make it a little bit harder to recover from down the line, and also certain, precon certain preconceptions that some people have about some models and hopefully some ways of painting that we can overcome together. And for today we're going to be painting this model right here, whilst we talk about the traps to avoid whilst painting your miniatures. So without further ado, let's crack on! Okay, let's start with the really obvious one, and that is thinning down paints. Now, this is something you've heard from everywhere and everyone, but it still happens, and why is that? Well, there's a few reasons why people don't thin down their paints. The first one is remembering to do it. If you're thinning down every single paint you use and absolutely every layer and even your highlights, you're thinning them down. Sometimes it's easy to slip up, sometimes it's easy to forget, sometimes you're just in a bit of a rush. But it's really important to keep doing it and remembering to keep doing it. And it's especially important to do it when you're starting out to get into the habit of painting. Now, even I occasionally forget to do it sometimes. You might even see me do it in some of my videos, but shh, we don't need to tell anyone that. But in any case, it's an important thing to do. And the other thing to remember why it's a pitfall I'm bringing up is because once you've done it a couple of times, it's easy to fall into bad habits of not thinning, thinning things down and then ending up with coats and ending up with highlights that are just that little bit too thick to be particularly satisfying. So thinning down your paints is something you need to remember to do, but it's also something you have to make sure that you keep doing even when you're in a bit of a hurry and making sure that if you are gonna paint that you're giving yourself the time to do it. Because obviously painting is something which takes a, t a long time it's not something you can rush, and I often find that for myself and people I know, when it comes to remembering to do some of the basic stuff, well, the reason we forget to do it is because we aren't giving ourselves enough time to do it. So when it comes down to doing anything, thinning down your paints and making sure that you've got the time to paint properly is absolutely vital. Now the second one, which leads on from that a little bit actually, is the texture of the model itself. Now I don't mean in terms of what's the model literally made out of, but what is the actual textures on the model? One of the big issues, and I've brought this up in a previous video, when you're painting things like Space Marines, is it prepares you really well how to paint power armor and metallic surfaces, but it doesn't prepare you so well when you have to paint large amounts of flesh, or hide, or leather, or fabric, or even bone, to be honest with you, because a lot of it is very different when it comes to painting. The way you shade it can be very different. The way all the contours and all the ridges manifest on the model are all really quite different. And there is a subtle difference between painting something which is meant to be solid and something that's meant to be softer, such as flesh or a fabric, for example. And painting Space Marines doesn't necessarily always prepare you for that. So when it comes to actually starting different models that have very different materials, it's always worth making sure that you try a few different things to get your head out of power armor mode or out of stormcast armor mode and into I'm painting something which is majority flesh or there's more leathers here, there's more hides, there's even even hair. These are all things that you have to remember when it comes to painting models that you're not used to painting, especially when it comes to talking about the various textures and the materials that are going to be rendered in paint on the model. These are things that are really important to do and these are things that you should practice before as well because your first attempt at painting flesh may not feel great because you're coming off of power armor and also you've got to remember that not all flesh is necessarily faces. Things such as death guard have lots of fleshy pustules and growths that are coming out of their bodies. That all counts as flesh for example. Orc flesh is muscly, it's bulging, but it's also a lot larger than human flesh and it's a completely different color. And this brings me on to my next point, know the colors you want to get down. It's very easy to look at something and say, I want it to be red, I want it to be blue, I want it to be green, I want it to be silver. That's all a good starting point. But to simply say, I want it to be one of these is sometimes not enough. Sometimes you need to be specific as to the kind of red, the kind of blue, the kind of silver, the kind of green you want to put down. Because if you don't have the specificity going in, sometimes it will be harder to rectify things if you don't like them further on down the line. And ultimately, it's then raising the question of, do you actually like the colors you've put down? If you just say red, any red, it might not be a red you like. If you just say any blue, it might not be a blue that matches up to what you're expecting it to be like. It's really important to remember the kinds of tones, the kind of textures, and the kind of shades that you want the colors to be in once they're on the model, not just say it's going to be this color and that's enough. And to go with this point a little bit further as well, is that can often 
it massively complement the model or it can sometimes make you feel like you've let down what you wanted initially. If you want darker reds or brighter reds, that's going to say a lot about the actual context of where the models come from. It tells the story as to who the model is. It tells you a lot about what's happened in them, arguably. And if you have a darker red, it could still be very clean, but it might obviously be a little bit more careworn at first glance and you'll have to work to make it look like it's meant to be dark red it's meant to be more polished and a bright red similarly can look very over bright and a little bit over exposed in certain lights and that may not be what you wanted and you have to remember very importantly as well when it comes to painting things such as liquids such as blood or the drips of gross corrosion that you see from Nurgle models or even acid or ichor those are another thing to bear in mind as well they won't be highlighted or painted in the same way that you'd paint armor, metal, or flesh. They are their own unique thing. And that's something which is really important to remember because they are so different in texture that if you paint them the same way, they will look extremely strange. But it's worth practicing them just so you get a sense as to how it all fits together. So just to quickly recap, the traps that are quite basic in some respects, but also quite important to remember, are thinning down your paints, knowing the textures you want to paint, knowing the kinds of colours you want to paint, and remembering if you're going to have things, if they're going to be a solid or a liquid, make sure you practice doing them. So those are the initial things that a lot of trap a lot of people at all levels. But then there's the next trap as well, and that is treating new techniques like old techniques. And that may sound a bit strange, but hear me out on this one. It's very easy to try new techniques such as non-metallics or edge highlighting or wet blending, and start treating it like it's an older technique. So whilst there are some things that are universal, such as the aforementioned thinning of the paints and knowing what your textures are going to be when you get into them, it's very easy to think that once you're going to start painting things a certain way, you feel like you know what you're doing with the brush. If it's a new technique, make sure you're checking yourself. When you're doing edge highlighting, for example, making sure that it's thin, but it's also precise and that you're not going over too far into the model. If you're going to be doing wet blending, making sure that everything on the palette and on the model is consistent in terms of where you are and where you want the colors to be. These are really important things to do and check yourself on your technique and what you're doing constantly. Because if it's a new technique, and even if it doesn't work out exactly the way you want it to the first time around, it's better to know that you're able to monitor your progress so you know where you may have gone wrong or where you know you can improve, or even knowing the bits you got right for next time is really, really important so that you can continue correcting and improving as you go. Not not simply walking away from it and thinking I knew what I was doing as I was going in because that won't help you in terms of developing this technique and then the next thing I want to say on traps that paint sort of fall into is don't believe all of your equipment is going to do the job for you now this may sound a bit obvious but it's important to remember this for two reasons first of all a top-end brush from somewhere like Windsor & Newton or Artist Opus is a lovely piece of equipment an expensive piece of equipment but just because it's an expensive brush and it will feel great doesn't mean it's going to do the work for you. You still have to practice, you still have to get used to painting, and you have to make sure that you know you're, when you're using different brushes. Not all brushes are the same shape, not all of them the same dimensions, they're not all the same weight. So you need to know the kinds of brush you're using before you get started. To pick up your Wargaming brush and to pick up your Winsor Newton brush, they're going to feel very different, they're going to have different weights, things are going to be balanced slightly differently, so make sure that you know your brushes when you're using them. And don't assume that one brush is always going to be the same as any other brush or that any one brush is going to be the improvement to your technique that you think it's going to be and this is another important trap which brings me onto this as well it's important to maintain your brushes but it's also to make sure that you clean your brushes thoroughly before you start changing colors for some things it is faintly more acceptable and faintly more forgivable if you go say for example from if you go from using black to agrax earthshade or if you go from something like lead belcher to balthazar gold these things are fairly forgiving and they're not the biggest problem but one thing which i have seen people do which is always a bit of a sad one to see is when you go from doing a highlight on a red to a highlight on a white that's something which can almost ruin a paint scheme entirely because if there's any residue on that brush then you're going to have a nice pink streak running all the way down that model. So check yourself on that one as well. And on this note as well, bonus one, it's worth changing your water between doing metallics and non-metallics or even having two different pots of water because you have to remember that you will get little metallic flakes from things like gold, bronze and silver 
in your paint pots and you don't really want them getting onto your brush if you're going to be painting something that isn't going to be metallic because that can show up on the model and that can sometimes ruin the effects you're going for. So that's something else to bear in mind. And then the next thing I'd say in terms of traps that are very easy to fall into, and this is one which a lot of people fall into and I fall into myself a fair few times even recently, is gluing models together before you start painting them. Not every model should be glued together. In fact, I'd encourage you to only ever put models together to see where they're going to overlap, but paint things in components as much as possible. And I used to spray paint things on sprue, but I don't do that quite as much anymore because if you paint, spray them on sprue, then you're not necessarily going to get all the mold lines off before you can paint them. So even though it is a bit of a pain, it's always better to paint things whilst they are in component form and then glue it together carefully afterwards, just so that you can get to all the hard to reach places. You can get to every detail on the model without it being obstructed by other parts of the model. And that's a really important thing to do. And if you are going to go into a project fairly soon where you know that you're going to have things that are going to overlap, then make sure you look at that very carefully to know that you can adjust for it when you need to. A great couple of examples for are Space Marine bolt gun arms because they cover the chest eagles and the chest eagles are quite a prominent part of the model. They're quite visible even when the bolt gun arms are on and obviously you're going to want to be able to paint this properly before you put the bolt gun arms on as well as things such as the midsection, the midriff of the Space Marines as well and even the back of the collar when the backpack goes on. Those are all things that are still quite visible and you're going to want to paint those before you start gluing the models together. A really good example are the Maluzai from the Daughters of Cain. Those models overlap and coil on themselves so much that if you glue them together it's uh, quite challenging to paint them after that. So I'd highly recommend with models like that, making sure you don't glue them together at all before you start building them. There are exceptions, obviously. Most of the lesser demons you can get away with doing that with, and arguably the Stormcast Eternal, provided you don't put the shields on, are also an option as well. So just a re quick recap of the ones we've just covered. Brushes, be careful of how you use them, and don't assume that a brush is going to change your style completely. Make sure that you treat new techniques with all the due care and attention that you should do and don't treat them like you're too familiar with them already. Have a second pot of water for your metallics and your non-metallics. And then of course, make sure that you don't glue your models together if you know there's going to be any overlap between the models stopping your brush from getting in. And then obviously, as I said before, keep an eye on your thinned paints. Make sure you give yourself time. And importantly as well, make sure that you check the textures of what you're going to be doing on the model. <clears throat> so I hope you found those useful and I hope there's something in there that's going to help everyone and not just make your painting life easier but also understanding the miniatures you're painting a little bit easier for you guys. So let me know what you think and if there's anything else that you think is worth noting leave it in the comments down below and let me know your thoughts. I look forward to hearing from you all and obviously it's worth remembering this is just what's helped me. If they help you fantastic but like I said let me know if there's anything else you think people need to know about. So those are my thoughts of the painting traps that you should probably avoid and keep an eye out for to make sure you don't fall into them like I have on many, many occasions throughout my life. But let me know what you think down below and I appreciate you watching. I post my videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. So thanks again for coming. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good YouTube chilly stuff. And whilst you're down in the comments, you can check out the website for the services I provide. Look at my Patreon. Just go to my Instagram, look at pictures of toy soldiers I painted. But in any case, thanks for watching. Goodbye and have a lovely day.